Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 11 of Dragoncast. Thank you all for joining us. Um, Sam, how are you doing? You good? Hey man, I'm good. Yeah? Um, I'm just so getting, I'm getting to Jack this evening. Huh? Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it too. Best thing mm. I love about doing these Dragoncasts is we keep, you know, we're going through people who are obviously a big part of the scene, which therefore means big part of like, our friendships and people we've hung out with and often not spoken to for ages. So I'm just looking forward to catching up. Um, have we got Flex of the Fortnite? Yeah, Flex of the Fortnite is this. Did you like that? Banging, man. That was nang. I liked, I liked pure style, man. Pure style. Um, Cool. So our guest on this episode is um, somebody who basically was part of the scene in the glory years of the streetboard years and has a hell of a lot of stories. And I'm hoping to hear some that maybe I've never heard uh, at all today. Um, it's Mr. Jack Johnson. How you doing, Jack? Thank you very much for joining us. Hey. How's it going, Jay? What's up, Sam? Good to see you guys. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, what are you up to nowadays? Where are you? Yeah, where are you living at the moment? Uh, well, I'm broadcasting to you from the anarchist jurisdiction of Portland, Oregon, um, as so declared by our president uh, during this wonderful, weird pandemic time, uh, which, as everybody knows, uh, anarchists are really big on jurisdictions, so we're all pretty pleased to be living in one of the largest jurisdictions for anarchists in America. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I don't know when this is actually going to go out. So, so when you say president, you mean Biden? Because this might be oh. after January twenty. God, God, I, 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 I am so jealous of anybody who's living in that future already, where Trump is no longer the president <laughs> of the United States. But unfortunately, now I'm stuck. I'm stuck in a time loop right now, and I, I just can't quite get there. Uh, just merely days to go uh, in the presidency, and they're they can't they can't evict him from the office quick enough. Um, so he's just he's going to serve out the rest of his term and then be impeached still afterwards. <laughs> like yeah. oh, bizarre. Uh, well, I was I just 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 a side note of politics. We can edit this out maybe, but so when he's going to be impeached by the Senate, are the Democrats going to have a majority in the Senate at that point? I think that the Democrats have like a majority in the Senate of like 51, um, which is, you know, they're just, they're just barely over majority. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it depends on like what kinds of laws they're trying to vote on, uh, like financial stuff. Uh, you can do it with like that small majority, um, but like other things you need like a 60% majority. So I, I don't know, man. Okay. Honestly, like not a lot of Americans know a lot about how our political structure works and how laws get, get made because it's such a complicated pain in the ass that... Yeah, it's, um, the complexities of it like get lost on us, I think. Um, and we don't really learn about that shit in school either. I don't know, if Jamie, if you do, Jay. Like American um, history, really? No, I'm not we at learn all. learn about any of that shit? No, not at all. Well, no. Um, I, the only American history I know is Hellburger, Disturbed, and Totally Committed. That's like my kind of... Uh, <laughs> 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 Those are, yeah, that's really all you need to know, man. For sure. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the Western United States uh, early snakeboarding and streetboarding scene was pretty much uh, yeah. what all of our modern culture is based on now, right now, so... Yeah, yeah, man. I've yeah. seen every, everyone's wearing those high, high pull-up socks and those super long shorts. And yeah, man. Like. Yeah, yeah. Everyone I see these days. Granted, I don't. I don't leave my bedroom that much, but everyone I run into is wearing those. So, um, I should maybe move the mirror somewhere. <laughs> cool. Man. What's the uh, what, what are the lockdown vibes in Portland? Um, you know, it's weird in America just in general. Um, I think Portland is actually one of the cities that's doing it well because people have this kind of interesting uptightness here, which is kind of helping to keep mm -hmm. them safe. You know what I mean? There's, you want to, 
a lot of people want to be kind of higher on the ecological social ladder, like doing more for uh, the environment and, and social concerns than everybody else. Cause it like kind of yeah. gets you clout, but at least that like gets people to put masks on and stuff is painful mm-hmm. at first. Like nobody would, I mean, I go to Utah, you know, where I'm, where I'm from, my family still lives. Uh, Mike and Brinton, you know, still living there. Dan's still living there. And like they, the governor might suggest that people put on masks And people will show up at his home to like have a, you know, a big problem and demonstrate and say, my kid doesn't need to wear a mask in school because your grandma's going to die or whatever. So I feel like Portland is actually like, it's one of the places in the U.S. that's actually able to kind of do this okay. But it's still kind of ghost town, you know, business is going under, um, Mm. like, it's a, it's a big drinking city. So like now all the, all the, uh, Bars and pubs are closed uh, by like 10 or 11, which I, for you guys probably doesn't seem too insane, but for here, it's like, we thought no, it was really, really when the closed, What's about when they when they close for you, right? Mm, no, no, it's all, all night. Oh, no. Yeah, all they, night? They, got, they got rid of that rule, man. Well, actually, shit. Oh, wow. The last time you were in the UK, maybe they shut at 11. I mean, when I was when I was hanging out with you guys, it was definitely like, yeah, the spots we went to were, were early night mm. spots, man. Um, I mean, we definitely we went down to Soho and stuff and did some kind of weird uh, yeah. like clubs too. You know, depends where you're living, Jamie. There's a towel on the radiator behind you, Jack. Can you see that? What oh, is sure that? Can. It kind of looks a little bit like um, you know what I mean? It's as uh, it's as it like an bird. orifice. It was a pink towel, and it was folded in such a way. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. Get that off. It's a family show, man. Well, actually, is it? Oh, no, now I've got to click the not made for kids uh, thing when we upload it to YouTube, man. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Hey, yeah. 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 So, um, actually, so, Jack, you mentioned you were from Utah, New Britain. So, like, for those out there who don't know, how did you first start snakeboarding? I guess. And what was your connection with Brinton, Dan, and that whole crew back in the day? Oh, good question. Okay. So I was, uh, I was actually one of the, uh, only people I knew in the world who was snakeboarding and it was because of that video disturbed. Um, so, uh, Mike Cox, uh, lived down on the West side and he and I used to, we grew up together, uh, going to school together rather. Um, and you know, we used to we used to skateboard and things. Um, and then we, I think, I think it might have been Mike that I heard about uh, Disturbed from first. Actually, if I'm thinking back, this would have been like 13, 14 years old, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, and it was just like holy crap! Like uh, you know, being able to being able to take the sport uh, to a brand new level, like seeing like seeing like Ingo do like rail slides on, on that super skinny bar people just eating like super hard slams and getting up and still kind of driving the sport forward i loved it and being from utah is all about you know kind of doing something different because it's kind of in the middle of the country and people there try to prove themselves to the coasts you know um and it's just about you know doing something wild and different and uh so Mike and I started uh, skating, like a lot of local street spots and stuff like that. We decided we wanted to try and go for a sponsorship from Snapple. We were just sending off letters to whoever, like, check out our, you know, our videos and like our, our pictures and stuff. I actually, uh, I actually met Britt. Um, we had been having a, a skate competition. Um, this guy, John, was like the local rep uh, in Salt Lake City for Snakeboard. And uh, his house was like a few blocks away from mine. Uh, so we got together for like demos and, uh, you know, all kinds of things at shops and stuff. We were having a competition uh, in this church parking lot. Uh, and some new guy from the city up north uh, wanted, to, wanted to come and compete. Uh, and I, that was the first time I met Britt and Dan. Um, and one of our guys uh, actually dislocated his thumb doing a hand plant on a quarter pipe. Um, and it was one of the gnarliest like dislocations I've ever seen, like just went, you know, completely, completely the wrong way. wouldn't snap back into place. Um, and he, I thought he was going to win the competition. He might've actually won the competition. I remember Brit, that might've been maybe the only competition that Brit 
didn't win. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was like super early. He was still a rollerblader at that point, but he worked at a skate park, um, you know, where he had a connection to like where he could be in a skate park where he used to rollerblade a lot. And he just started like flexing, uh, like street board back in the day it was still snake board it was still on the uh like oh man what was it i can't remember what it was the, it was the one with the wooden decks uh where you could you could start doing what was it, the, it i want to say stiffy stiffy um, yeah yeah stiffy yeah. that's it yeah yeah uh, i think that uh yeah i think it was we were still riding stiffies in those days and he had, like he was the first guy that i ever saw like drop in on a vert ramp or anything like that and he you know just kind of taught himself that because he I mean, he had a history with rollerblading and things like that, but his, so his body awareness and gymnastics, I guess, like his body awareness is like super, super tech. But yeah, that was like way back when Britt was low man on the totem pole. And like, you know, I had a few more bags in my trick than he did, I felt like. And then just in, in every single way, you know, he, he started to just try and grow and stretch out and really actually get his, his fundamentals down. He's the only person I, that, I've ever skated with, I think it was actually about building fundamentals so you can skate for a very long time. Because everybody else I knew was just gnarly. You know, they just throw themselves at whatever. Um, yeah, I know we, uh, I mean, we went through kind of a lot of interesting eras. We did like, uh, you know, a couple of large like music festivals in Salt Lake. Uh, we did like a couple of um, like large festivals up in Ogden, um, like, I remember we we were skating at the big ass show, and that's like the first time I got to see Beck and Corn was there. <laughs> if you remember that band, uh, and like you know, just a bunch of people, and it's like, wow, it's kind of weird that I was you know in in a they were like demos little, at festivals or what? Right. Demos at festivals, just a pretty much just like uh, two quarter pipes or a one like eight foot roll in. Uh, maybe a couple of, uh, you know, launch, uh, launch ramps, maybe a rail in between and just a, like a six foot quarter pipe. And that's what we'd show up with and just like skate all day. And people were into it, you know, like, I mean, people were still hadn't ever seen snake boards before. Well, we um, were doing that for Snakeboard USA. Sort of. I mean, it was like John was the rep for Snakeboard USA yeah. and we were the Salt Lake team. Um, so yeah i mean he's uh yeah he's he's a guy who like you know got the got the festival all hooked up and stuff like that but then later on it started to be brit like uh brenton was getting everything set up like uh music festivals up in ogden and things like that so i don't i don't know whatever happened to john man he we we lost track of that guy uh i don't know had some had several kind of funny parties at his house, like when I was kind of way too young to be doing that stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, so we didn't really keep track of each other. Like in the in the later years, I wonder if he's still living there. <laughs> no jokes, man. Like I, I'm trying to remember, like when I first heard of you, because were you in some, you were in some of the early frontal videos? Um, which was the first one oh, you were in? I can't remember which one. Uh, was it what fish? Uh, I think, think of, right, yeah, I think definitely, probably, I mean, I, oh man, frontal, what wonderful bindings. Uh, yeah, man, I think that, I think that Fish was uh, the first frontal video, um, like real, like, yeah, full, full production. Um, and so, yeah, there's like a couple of little guest spots or something in there. I was, I never actually had a section in any video. Um, I, uh, yeah, I was, I was working on one for Left for Dead. Um, when like a, the accident happened, um, and you know, I still like, I don't know, I want to, I want to access the footage of like, you know, what, what we had built up and actually put that out there because even though the skate section never got filmed, like we had a lot of fun, like producing the other parts. I don't know. It's just, uh, I mean, I was, I was there in the background a lot of times, you know, got to had the pleasure of judging a couple of, uh, competitions, um, you know, got to compete and, like where where we could i mean when worlds was in salt lake city uh that was awesome um yeah real ride skate park in like 2000 97 98 wait 2000 that you think wow. yeah I thought that, that sounds like mm -hmm. maybe i don't know i graduated yeah, sure. the, the worlds and uh at real ride skate park the it one, was 2000 the one that said you was at and we all stayed at brinton's house yeah yeah, yep. 2000, man, 100%. Yeah, 
Okay. Wow, that's crazy, man. A lot happened for me that year. That was the year that I that I graduated. So for some reason, I kind of thought that it was it was earlier, but man, so yeah, I'd also moved across the country. And, that? What's that? How long after that was the um, the whole sort of incident that Left for Dead was named after? I think so. Well, yeah, and that was, I mean, that was actually after, no, because you know what? I visited you guys in 2001. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, we did a lot of street skating and stuff out there. Rocked, went out to Milton Keynes. I remember lots of sheep. Uh, it was a great time, man. Like, um, yeah, no, that was, that was brilliant. So it was, uh, it was after that I was back and I was um, like, I was working pretty hard on putting together a, a street section um, for a video. And yeah, like, I, it, it seems like we had just gotten back from California. I think we had been down in like LA County or someplace or Ventura, like, and been to a park out there. And I think that there was actually, there was worlds out there. Yeah, and it was yeah. like he was there. Yeah, was it but like it? LA Worlds. LA Worlds was two thousand three, I think. I think. So that was after the accident. Accident, uh, yeah. Yeah, but there was we had just been out there before, like checking. You remember checking it out and like the, the doing, clinic, the dimension. Yeah, exactly. Clinic. That was it. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, man, that was that was great. Yeah, because we had just come back. Uh, from you know, I mean, Thomas Keenley was out there, and like Goddard Pilsner, I think. Uh, I remember Victor Merstig uh, staying in a hotel. Do you remember we stayed at that hotel, and there was like the people next door, like in the room next door, just going at it all night long, and for whatever reason, like we just <laughs> couldn't. It was, <laughs> it was disgusting. We couldn't get them to stop. We we're banging on the wall and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I remember can't... Brody going crazy over it. <laughs> Where he was getting crazy, what was he <laughs> trying to get? It him. was literally just like thump, 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 oh, 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 moan, 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 like some lady, all, like all night, man. It just kept getting worse as the as the wee hours went on, and like, uh, yeah, we, I don't think many of us got much sleep that night. It was, that was crazy. Who all was on that trip? Faye was there. Faye yeah. was there. Do you remember we got busted by the cop? Was it in that trip when? we were trying to break into the swimming pool and like, cause they'd locked it at night. And I think we were like, you know, we'd been partying and we were just like, oh, let's go into the pool. And then I think myself and Faye were the first ones. So over the gate and then the cops came and then you guys all like ran or something elsewhere. And then we were stuck on top of these vending machines for like half an hour waiting for the cops to leave. Um, that was hilarious. Wow, that is that I do I I don't obviously don't remember that as well as you since I wasn't hiding in terror from the police. Um uh, but I yeah, yeah, I kind of I kind of vaguely have a memory of running away from cops <laughs> at a motel. Yeah, Downey, uh, Downey, wasn't it? That Downey. Uh, Downey. That yep. was that was the spot. But, yep. Downey. What? Yeah. Yeah, that was the place the area in LA that we that we were at. Oh, okay. Um, yep. It was pretty crazy. Downey, California. Yeah, yeah all of us, like all of us from somewhere else too. We didn't, we didn't know what to do about local cops or anything like that. We were just some some little hellions. Oh man. No, but they were good days. I mean, but, yeah, those times were great. Um, I mean, do you want to chat about the accident? Do you want do you want to not? Like, I'm fine with chatting about the accident, man. I mean, it's you know, it's a it's a big life changer for me, obviously. Um, I mean, it's probably you know. I'm I'm grateful that it came from, you know, kind of the snakeboard streetboard community because that's like one of the biggest influencers in my life. Uh and you know, that's uh that's just that's what happened. I mean the pity the piteous part is that I'm not able to skate anymore. Like, you know, really I mean my ankle's still a little bit screwed up. Yeah. Um but you know, got yeah. I mean I'm walking around on two feet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's that's something that people didn't really think was gonna happen. So <laughs> Not yeah, at all, man. I mean, wh what happened? Because I mean, it, it was horrific. And it's something that I actually just told my girlfriend about it before coming on on here today, <laughs> to trying to explain who you were. But do you want to go through what happened? Yeah, what the what the fuck happened? Sure. Yeah. So uh, 
April 20th, uh, 2001. We are hanging out. Uh, we're just back from the clinic uh, in Downey, California. Um, and uh, like a bunch of internationals are in town. So we're, we're stoked uh, getting, you know, like lots of skating. And let's see, Spit was up there at that point. Yeah. Jay was definitely in town. Uh, I feel like I feel like Max was around. Um, I think Max. It's Max Meyer. Yeah, I think he was. I drove up from LA with Gotthard Pilsner, his girlfriend at the time, um, Spit, and Thomas Keenley, and myself all crammed into this car. I remember it was a, it was a pretty funny journey up there. But yeah, yeah it's, it sounds like Max hilarious. Up there as well. Super, super funny crew. So we were, yeah, so uh, we were bored. Uh, we weren't skating that night. We'd already like all kind of had big days and uh, injuries to nurse. And uh, so we, we were hanging out at Britt's apartment and he's like, hey, let's go play, uh, let's go play hide and seek at the gymnasium, his brother's proper gymnastics gymnasium. So we go there uh, and uh, set up a game of hide and seek, you know, with all the lights off. And, um, I think I was it first round, uh, and I found everybody except for fucking Jay Nauman, dude. Where is this guy? And I think we had everybody looking for you, Jay, for like 45 minutes or something, I want to say. And I don't know if you had, I don't know what you're, like, if you had fallen asleep or what, but you were in between two giant crash mats, like these, like, 16 by eight foot by like four foot deep crash mats uh and i'm glad we got you out of there because i remember thinking man he, he could have like suffocated or something yeah i can sleep anywhere it's i'm known for it um but long, yeah but i still feel guilty about falling asleep <laughs> anyway hey, as long as you can sleep without breathing and like you didn't have a, a problem there then that's all good yeah. um so, so yeah, next, next round, I'm not going to be beaten by Jay Nauman. No way. I'm going to show this Englishman how it's, how it's crazy U-towners do. I, uh, yeah, there's the zip line going from like one end of the building to the other end of the building. It was newer. Um, it wasn't something I'd actually been on before. Uh, and I thought that I had the shape of the building in my head wrong. I thought that we were in the middle of the building, like on the first floor. And I'd never even seen the, the back parking lot. But what happened was... I went up by where the zip line was, and I was like, aha, I'm gonna pull myself up back there. The rafters were all exposed, so I hoisted myself up into the rafters and went back as far as I could. Um, and I evidently was only hiding on a layer of sheetrock uh, that was like in the back end of the soffit. Like, so I broke through that layer of sheetrock and, and fell the three stories the back parking lot asphalt and won the game thank you very much by hiding back back there in a pile for eight hours until some lady found me walking her dog in the morning and you guys were all so pissed that i left man i remember like Britt was mad like that i had like he thought i don't know i guess he thought that i like met some girl at 7-eleven or something and, you know yeah. went, went away for a little whatever <laughs> like i had no idea man like i i still don't even know what that like you know what that back parking lot really looks like uh, like i have kind of a memory of maybe when i fell but i was pretty scrambled for a few weeks there so like i'm not i'm not sure if it's actually real or what yeah yeah um, and like well, that's one of those things because I, I just remember we were there and like brit saying like ah jack's probably gone off met a girl like because we were looking for you for like i think like an hour and a half two hours i don't like it was a long time and then we like none of us thought that you could have gone to that back part and no one thought to check out the back. It just, cause it was a lot higher at the back of the building than below than the front. And us just going like, he must've gone home. He wanted to win or like was just playing with us or something. And the next morning when we got a knock on the door, I think I, I was like sleeping on the floor next to like spit or something. And it was the cops. And like, it took us a while just to work, realize what had actually happened like no man like one of those things i mean fuck it was eight hours over it was in the night time what what um what time of year was it summer wasn't it yeah would have been would have been yeah spring like uh turning into summer like already pretty warm in utah for sure, sure. um yeah 
Oh, yeah, man. And um, yeah, so f I mean, for those of you who know the legendary Dimension video that came out a couple of years after was called Left for Dead. And that is after Jack and that, that incident because... What sort, of, um, what sort of injuries did you get from that, Jack? So uh, my, my street board training did me, did me wonders, actually, uh, because I somehow landed on my feet. Um, and so I, uh, when I did that, I mean, it was about, when it measured out at like 36 feet or something like that, like around three stories. Um, so I broke my talus, uh, the, you know, the hinging bone of your, of your ankle. I shattered that into four pieces that they could find <laughs> and uh, I had to get screws there. I sat down uh, next after landing on my feet and like my, my pelvis uh, shifted or my pubis rather. So I had to have a plate put in there like uh, just to kind of straighten that out. I had done something to my sacrum, I guess. Uh, and then the final thing in that fall was I hit my face right on my knee, like after, you know, as I was collapsing into a pile. So that's when I broke like a bone in my eye and that's when my brain started swelling up. So I guess, as I understand it, I was okay for like a couple of days. I was like, like they were, when the ambulance came, I was awake and aware and talking to people. Um, like I was talking to the lady that found me with, you know, walking her dog in the morning. It wasn't until like a couple days later at the hospital uh, that I just like the, the wall, my brain started pushing, you know, against the walls of my skull and I started to get super fucking confused <laughs> and say, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what people still say to me is like the funniest I've ever been. Like, it was just like the, you know, this weird kind of scrambled era of just jokes. And I knew I was going to be okay somewhere, you know, in my, in my brain. Uh, but like, I knew I was kind of fucked up too. So I was like, I would talk to the nurses or the doctors like they were a cop and I was like a partying teenager, you know, <laughs> just like, mm -hmm, yes, no, like very polite. <laughs> and like, uh, uh, I don't know, man. I mean, a lot of people like, some people had the presence of mind to, to record some things, uh, some footage and stuff. But most people that I know that were around during that era uh, and like stayed with me at the hospital were like, shit, I wish I would have like documented more of the weird bullshit that you that came out of your mouth because now that you're okay it's i see how funny it was yeah. uh it's weird though man i mean i didn't you know Dude, i remember i remember some of it but sorry go ahead sam i'm yammering no it's just uh, no carry on man i was wondering so you were lying there for eight hours were you conscious they yes um when when the ambulance came Mm -hmm. I was conscious. Um, like, uh, I don't really remember any of that. I honestly, like, I didn't, I didn't have to deal with as much of this as, like, say, my mother did or, like, you guys did, you know? Like, uh, I kind of just, I was out. I, was, I don't, I literally, my brain swelled up and I got, so I got a deep tissue, like, they call it a brain shear uh, when, my, when my head hit my knee. And um, that caused some swelling and I think, you know, just trauma, like mm, endorphins and stuff. Your your memories go bye bye. It's part of survival, you know. Mm. So I don't really, I couldn't really tell you that much about about the actual fall. I remember everything up until then, crystal clear. I even remember that you know I I had uh, like I had tested negative for drugs and alcohol, uh, but I definitely remember catching marshmallows on my tongue in Brinton's apartment from across the room. We were throwing marshmallows into each other's mouths, like the mini ones, like. That, there definitely was some weed involved there, you know, like, um, I mean, I, it's, it's weird. I remember all that stuff, you know, more than, more than I remember the, the night. In fact, I remember like the, the worst scar I've got from that day. Like I, I had my, my ankle got reconstructed. So there's like a, a surgical scar. That's the, technically the worst scar that I got from that day. But other than that, like the actual natural worst scar I got from that day was this little scar on my elbow, which you can hardly even see anymore from doing a, uh, it was like a 14 set at some school that we were just hawking ourselves off of. Um, and like, that's how we got so, so tired that night. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember like, that set, man. 
we were, yeah, we were, we were really hurting. So for years and years, that was the, the, you know, the very worst mark I had from that day. <laughs> like even, you know, even though like all my other body got, you know, so messed up and bones, bones broken and stuff. Yeah, man. And with, there was a lot of sort of physiotherapy, presumably, after. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, they didn't, uh, they were worried that my, um, my ankle was going to fuse, uh, or they're going to have to fuse it, and I would be a club foot for the rest of my life. But the physical therapist was awesome. Um, the occupational therapist was awesome. My speech therapist sucked. She was, she was just this, you know, she had me like do like schoolwork and stuff like that. <laughs> like, uh, you know, had me writing reports and things and kept reporting that I was tangential. Uh, and like, she just didn't know me, you know what I mean? So my mom is, my mom comes and my mom, and my sister are hanging out with me and mm. the therapist is like, yeah, I'm so sorry. Your son is like this now. I hope we can, you know, get this kind of thing fixed. And my mom was like, yeah, no, he's normal. That's, <laughs> that's exactly how he was. You couldn't, couldn't keep this, you know, straight, uh, train of thought anyways. It's always like jumping off somewhere. So yeah, like, uh. It was really funny. She actually, she sent me to outpatient speech therapy. That was like my graduation from, you know, brain, brain rehab in the hospital. And I showed up at the spot and had a, you know, 20 minute meeting with the therapist. And they're like, I don't know what this person sent you here for. Like, I don't know what you want out of me. So I asked them for a bunch of logic puzzles. They're like, great, here's a book of logic puzzles and you, we, you can turn them in or not. <laughs> like whatever, you're, you're fine. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, like the, I think for as, like, as hectic as that and kind of life-changing as that was, like most of the years in between have been, um, merciful. I gotta say, and like, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm glad that, you know, I'm starting to have some kind of problems now, but that's because of a separate issue. I, got, I had some blood clots. Uh, and so the scar on my ankle is not looking so hot these days, but I just got to keep moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like use it or lose it. Like that's life anyways. So. Yeah. Fuck man. No, it was, it was such a crazy incident. And then you had, you were still hanging around like filming with the guys, like not skating, but for Left 4 Dead. And is it in Left 4 Dead where you, you eat, what do you eat? You eat something. There were, we were, we were sessioning at a school, we were sessioning this big long curb and there was, I think I ate a lot of things. That was a, that was kind of a funny, weird era uh, where I would just like gross the dudes out by eating bugs and stuff. I remember like swallowing night crawl. We've stopped somewhere for night crawlers on the way to a skate park in Logan. And like, so I remember, I think I actually snorted a night crawler. Uh, I think I ate on the video, like there was an ant fight uh and so yeah i like licked an ant fight off the ground <laughs> like chewed that out i mean that you know th in those days like there were no memes or or things like that you know like this is before like instagram man so you know the the weird shit that you saw was in skate videos of somebody doing something stupid and that you know i wanted to carry forward that torch as yeah. much as possible <laughs> no, you, you definitely did man um who actually who has you know you said the footage that you were filming before that who would have that would that be b or that'd be b yeah yeah i mean he's he's kind of the guy who's got probably the the biggest longest lasting collection of anything street board in utah for sure oh we had a question from brinton actually yeah from, um, what was from brinton well, he, he told me to ask you about, uh, I was doing my shopping and I was on the phone to him yesterday. Oh, that was it. He, go, he said to me to tell, ask you about the time that you, you sold all your possessions and you went to go like farm marijuana. <laughs> um, but some, oh. in some, and he, was, he told me to ask you about the car as well, for some reason, in, like, that you were in some tiny little car that you just you yeah. went off to farm marijuana in. Yeah, so this was, you know, uh, I was living in a sick apartment in Salt Lake where I could paint on the walls and throw parties and do whatever the hell I wanted to. So at that point in my life, I was just like, I can do whatever the hell I want to. And I, so I left all that glory uh, to just live in a geo prism, which if, if you know what those are, you know, they are tiny. Um, no, it's like a geo prism? What, what is a that? Prism, it's like, it's about the size of a, of a Fiat, um, you know, the old Fiats, like uh, with, uh, but it did have a bit of a, a hatchback. 
So yeah, I, uh, I just drove uh, from Salt Lake to a friend, a friend of mine from high school at a farm uh, in the mountains in California. And uh, so I went to make my fortune. And uh, I ended up um, on the drive was when I got uh, was when I got the second bout of blood clots after the uh, after the accident. Um, so it turns out that I've got like a factor five Leiden. It's like I I act, it, I, I clot a little bit pro, more proactively than most people. Like uh, and so getting out of the car and rolling out a knapsack at night rather than sleeping in the driver's seat probably would have uh you know been a, been a game changer for me and i'd highly recommend it to anybody who's out on road trips uh yeah like uh, i basically spent like two weeks or a month uh i mean i was there in california for a month before the the class got too bad but there's like two weeks in the mountains there where i was just like trimming as much weed as possible to be able to pay for like the, the medical bills that I knew had I had coming up as soon as I got into town <laughs> and <laughs> could see a doctor and uh yeah so then I mean that's sort of like uh then I had to I had to get care I mean my I had a clot like all the way from the top of my uh femoral artery uh down to the bottom of the palpiteal uh like so basically every deep vein in my right leg had clot in it and um uh, yeah it was like i could i could hardly walk by the time i got to portland uh, and then it was just oh, like man. you know the daily daily grind like once again you know this freaking leg like we gotta we gotta get out and move every day otherwise we're not gonna get any better yeah. and uh yeah so that's been that's been the the bear kind of uh you know, since then, it's really, really been the game changer. Uh, now I have to wear funny tight socks uh, <laughs> with compression hose and shit. It's gonna turn me into a little bit of an old man, but it, like, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely pretty interesting, man. Races I, are optional, though. Huh? Yeah, yeah. They okay. That's fair. I mean, I have a little bit of a gut these days, so you know, it does feel better than a belt. Uh, but you know. Uh, don't worry, that's yeah, what I'm high angle here, it's slimming. Exactly. That's what um uh, there's also I don't know if you use it on Zoom, there's like a, a thing where you can touch up your face, like there's a setting. So um me and Sam always rock on that. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm, so I'm you're, you're saying I need uh, my face needs a touch up? Is no, that you great. add that on the pile? <laughs> I thought you were using it, man. I thought you were using it. I thought you knew about that because it looks fresh. Yeah, um, it's like what's on the ceiling? Um, the ceiling uh, is literally just a sheet stapled in. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you know, like your uh, your porch kind of conservatory. Yeah, yeah essentially, I live. This is uh, this is my my sunroom. Um, just sun sort room. of, That's I have this nice for. little little zone. Yeah, attached to my bedroom where I'm I'm fortunate to live in Portland, Oregon, right now. Like, How uh, you find yourself in Portland. How long were you on the farm? Did you go there from the farm? Uh, yeah. So my mom was living uh, in Portland at the time. Um, and uh, like I had to come somewhere and, and heal up after the whole like uh, farm incident. So I ended up uh, basically just coming here and then trying to lay down roots. And uh, just, I love, you know, I love this city. It's pretty, it's pretty rad. Um, I mean, you know, Burnside Skate Park is here. Like that was, that was always like a huge appeal. Uh, and so yeah, I uh, just kind of have stayed here ever since. I, I cooked uh, for a long while there at this really cool restaurant, uh, New Deal Cafe. Uh, and then I've been uh, working um, for Breakside Brewery uh, for like eight years uh, before this whole, you know, pandemic thing hit. Now everything's changing around, but I don't know. I might I might end up going, you know, going back and working for them. It's, it's cool, you know, building, building, a pretty successful, pretty popular, and freaking delicious brewery uh, from the ground up. Um, getting to be a part of that uh, has has really been um, has really been cool. You know, I mean, that's part of the my my spiritual salvation since I've come to Portland has pretty much been food and drink because the scene is so amazing here. It's a pretty European city, and um, so that's kind of you know where I get inspired uh, these days. And uh, like I. Yeah, beer is beer is mysterious and magical, and 
that's kind of been the thing. And now that now we're in lockdown and, you know, just talking to Jay earlier about how, yeah, it's, I think I'm, I think I've been through the darkest parts of, of the lock at lockdown in this year already and not working at a brewery right now and having access to tons and tons of free beer is actually an okay thing. Even though it's like, yeah. the best, you know, yeah. it's the best brewery in the world, but uh, you know, it's, yeah. What do you do there? What, um, what's, what's your kind of part of the company? You... Oh, just been doing front of house stuff uh, forever. I mean, beer's got such an interesting, you know, rich history uh, and is like, I mean, it's just the act of serving somebody a pint of beer. Like there's a fabulous, you know, like centuries long tradition there. And mm -hmm. um, there's, there's kind of so much to that. Uh, so, I mean, that's, I've been, you know, mostly done like front of house and front of house management stuff. Um, and but really like i think that behind the bar is kind of uh where I, where i feel like i fit the very most sometimes you know um yeah just just saying something weird to somebody and giving them a drink and watching their day actually instantly kind of turn around and knowing that it's one of the best goddamn beers in the world and they probably don't understand why it's so cool <laughs> like it's it's cool man um yeah that little that little company is uh, is expanding. It's growing up, you know. Like this little, it started out this little, literally little corner pub with a mash tun in the basement, and uh, you know, four little fermenters. And pretend um, uh, pretend I've just come to the bar and um, recommend me a beer, man. Recommend me a beer. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, what are what are you into? You kind of seem like uh, fruited sours are probably your thing. Fruit. Uh, true. True. Only into fruity beers. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, well, then I'll sell you one of those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, kind of beer, what kind of beer is it? Is it? What is it like? IPA? What? Uh, well, we got fruity IPAs. Uh, we got, uh, I mean, you know, they're doing amazing things with, uh, with hops these days. And if you have a nice kind of sweet background, uh, then you can really bring forward some cool flavors. Um, like, uh, I mean... You know, this one here, uh, I mean, are we really, am I actually selling you a beer? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dude, I mean, we could, I, I could go, I could go on about, about Breakside's uh, adventures for sure. Like those, those guys have done some absolutely insane, like small batch craft experimentation. Their barrel program is ridiculous. Um, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there, have you ever heard of an Oino beer? What kind of beer? Oino Who beer. Knew? Or an Oino, Oino. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically like a hybrid of uh, uh, fruit uh, and barley. Uh, and like, so it's, it's a beer wine, if you will. Like you'll take like actual grapes uh, and this kind of thing dries out the entire like product, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you can have this kind of intense sweetness that's also really light bodied also really dry also mm -hmm. that sweetness is bad you know st stood up against a hoppy bitter backbone and then there's all the natural acidity from the fermentation so you have like every you have a story arc uh, like uh, on every sip you know it kind of it kind of changes uh, i mean one of the first beers that we uh were like that people would really come to breaks head for was this beer called the aztec which was like an american strong ale uh, just Dutch cocoa powder, um, serranos and habaneros, uh, and is in this dark ass, like strong, uh, you know, chocolatey hot beer. Uh, and we started barrel aging that. Like, um, I mean, this stuff is just stupid. You let it sit in a barrel for a little while, and it comes out with all this vanilla, and you know, a lot of the compounds like change, uh, where it picks up flavors, you know, from the wood itself too. Like, um, I mean. Yeah, say what say what you will. Uh, there's there, there's a huge like culture of experimentation out here as far as like you know food and beverage is concerned. So there's like tons of like spontaneous fermentation. Like people are really into just like you know kind of naturally letting letting the environment sort of do its thing. Um, so you guys know what a cool ship is. Uh, it's like a big big old dairy tub, uh, like stainless steel, shallow pool that you uh, basically, instead of pitching yeast into your wort after you've uh, you know, cooked it and changed all those, those grain sugars into a sugary like you know, grain soup, uh, 
you literally that's that's just ripe for the picking like bacterially speaking right micrologically speaking uh, so um you open the bay doors of a of a brewery and just let the whatever's floating in the air you know that lives on the leaves of the nearby uh, orchard like mm-hmm. flutter on down and go ahead and go ahead and insinuate itself upon that big you know exposed pool of tepid uh, wort <laughs> and oh, well, man. So, like, the, the the environment where the brewery is it kind of affects the taste of the beer absolutely it's, it's in so 100 percent. yeah the germans the germans have uh that hauptgeschmeckt right like the notion of a house flavor and that's and where that comes from is literally like the the yeast uh would be so fervent like from uh, just fermenting batch after batch after batch of beer in the same cellar or location that, that I mean if you took you know a sample from like the pillars or from the walls you would see like huge huge amounts of whatever kind of yeast was most dominant in uh, in that particular brewery and yeast is like a huge driver of what the actual flavor is like on the far end right because that's it's providing all the enzymes uh, for for your chemical changes to happen and for for wort sugar soup to become beer um and like i mean you know along with that like uh, like you think about think about your german vice beer right like banana um isoamyl acetate is the is the ester and it's literally people talk about it like banana runts uh because that is the flavor if you've ever had the you know like a really runts, yeah yeah the little little candy things yeah well, yeah exactly a little hard candy uh tastes you know just like fake bananas but that fake bananas flavor was actually discovered in beer first uh, in in vice beers and hefeweizens and stuff like that, and that's where scientists learned how to how to isolate it. Um, that's where scientists learned how to make banana runs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So when you well, eventually, you know, you flash forward down the line a little a little ways uh, to whoever, but that's how the that's how the ester became identified. You know, uh, like. Um, I mean, it's interesting, like clove, clove flavors, uh, you know, all these, all these things, um, I mean, come from, come from the, the micro. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, man, the, it's kind of dorky stuff. Like the Oregon's the only place in the union that has a state microbe and it's Saccharomyces cerevisiae, um, which is just a micro. a microbe, uh, you know, a microorganism. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, it's state, state, oh, state, state micro. micro. State micro. Yeah. Damn. Who, cho- who, who chose it? Who, who chose that? I mean, some, some lobbyists, uh, you know, people in the Brewers Guild, uh, whoever, whoever, I mean, it was, it, it was definitely like people in the Brewers Guild who were lobbying to have a state microbe. And there's so much like local, uh, local kind of brewing lore and knowledge uh, that it's, it became a thing, <laughs> and I don't think they. I don't think that any other states actually have a state micro. They have to look into that. But okay, okay. I'm sure we're yeah, getting people popping state. up in the comments, like uh, disproving you, be like, no. I hope so. Arizona has uh, the Brody microbe or some shit. I don't know, um, but yeah, man. Um, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Do you ever see? Because there's a street border up in uh, in your way, uh, Kyle. No, Kyle. Uh, yeah, yeah no, I've seen him around. Uh, we're friends on Facebook, but I've actually never met the guy. Um, oh, really? Like, yeah, we were going to, we were going to maybe meet. Uh, I think Sergi got a hold of him when Sergi was in town one time, and we were all gonna, we were all like, gonna go have a session. Oh, I think or Sergi wanted to have a session, but I, the like the day before we were gonna do it, like. Um, Sergi and I went to the skate park uh, that's like outside of a high school, uh, which is a pretty amazing little spot. Um, and I had kind of been getting back into skating a little bit and I had a, you know, I had a camera. So I told Sergi that I wanted to film cause I wanted to film him doing tricks kind of like it's been long enough since I'd actually been to a skate park that I totally figured out that I want to film me and I want you to film me. So yeah, I showed up and session with Sergi a little bit, and uh, I ended up like dislocating two of my ribs that day, um, like at the park, <laughs> like just while warming up. And so it never, I it never materialized. Like I had to go take care of myself. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. 
It's yeah, man. Yeah. It was pretty funny, man. I yeah, I just like you know, just like fresh back on. Like, didn't my bindings weren't quite adjusted. Like, so I felt like I was turning out a little bit more than I meant to. And I came up, lip slide to bank down into a little box and my wheels just like in the corner of the bank and the and the box just caught i fell straight over onto my left arm past the edge of the fun box and my my ribs went right down on the uh on the coping <laughs> and it was yeah, yeah it, was, it was like so no i have I've, I've never had the pleasure of meeting kyle but uh as far as i know he's still out here and still writing uh, yeah yeah i think i think sergi or Brinton came up, was hooked up with him at one point over the last few years, I think. He uh, he, he met up with him somewhere, I'm not sure, but he's definitely... Yeah, still in he was in San Diego when we went, Jay. Was it? Oh, yeah, 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 he was. Yeah. I, was, I forgot what about it. was that? Uh, 2017, maybe? Really, that long ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was like the Strapped In and What Tour. That was mm-hmm. pretty fun. Oh, man. Oh, man. The good old days. Are you still in touch with, like, Brinton... Uh, Zig, yeah. all the boys. Yeah. Zig, uh, Zig, I haven't really been in strong contact with since he moved to LA. But I mean, you know, just kind of still loose affiliations. I mean, he worked on those Tony Hawk games. Yeah, uh, yeah. like he's got his name in the credits at Tony Hawk too. Like it's pretty dope. Uh, Brit, I definitely still see. Um, I was just back in Utah, uh, escaping the wildfires this season, uh, like escaping all that smoke, and uh, so I drove down to Utah. And Britt and I went up to the, uh, the Woodward Park in uh, Park City, which is just like stupid. It's so cool, man. They've got this massive, like, I don't know, 40 foot roll in section. Like, uh, I don't know. It's, I don't know how high it is, actually, but it's a really long roll in to um, like a f- big foam pit or a like a kind of long tabletop uh, with a. <laughs> you know, a quarter pipe on the other side. And so it's like the, the foam pit was out, unfortunately, because it was COVID and they didn't know if it'd be like a health safety thing. So they uh, weren't letting people fall in the same foam, but, you know, masked up and filmed a uh, film Brit doing some, uh, some pretty sick stuff actually over this tabletop, like <laughs> guys still shredding, you know, like uh-huh. just like consistent banging out, banging out tricks, man. Uh-huh. Um, nice. Yeah. And uh, Mike Cox, uh, back in utah he's uh he unfortunately he had an el- elbow injury <laughs> but uh um yeah he's uh he was he was skating again there for a little while too uh so i know he and Britt were like you know I'd, he had just started skating again i think and he yeah, and Britt yeah. has hooked up a few times so i've been in touch with that guy as well man cool, cool. Uh, i remember mike cox actually sat was it mike cox that came out no when we met in london um, no no oh, i thought mike, great oh. great no what was his name? Mike Sam's from Austin, Texas. Yeah, that was it. A guy from Texas. Cool, man. Cool. Um, man, we're coming up to an hour. I don't know if there's any other. Oh my god. Yeah, like <laughs> we go and cut it out of the hour. Anything else you want to chat about? I don't know, man. Like uh, it's, you know, it's beautiful to see see you all, and it's just to see like streetboard still going, man. It's yeah. always been, you know, for underground heroes and it's, it maybe always will be, man. I yeah. kind of love that about it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I think it's like, yeah, it may get, it can get a little bit bigger than it is, but like there's a, that's what I love. It's, it's just different, man. It's different. And it attracts those types of people that we're all, uh, that yeah, we're man. All, Have you got any, um, got any final words? Do you want to like impart some of your wisdom? on the the streetboard generation or you know just generally people that are dealing with uh dealing with isolation lockdown and all the fuckery that's going on in the world at the moment uh well okay if we're going to talk about that then give yourself a pass uh because shit's hard for people everywhere uh and you know, it's it's hard on all of us, man. It really, really brings out the weird emotions and the weird thoughts. Um, don't give yourself too many passes, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no fucking smoking. <laughs> like, less is weed. That's okay. But yeah, no. yeah, man. Cut out that tobacco because we're all probably going to make it to ninety, but it's going to be uh, you know a question of the quality of life when we actually get there. 
Yeah. The thing I heard that I really liked is uh, somebody somebody asked uh, if I had fed my soul today, and that kind of stuck with me because uh, you know I think that, that is that is necessary. Pay attention to whatever you love yeah. and do that every <laughs> every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, or whatever it is, man. Wherever your heart feels like taking you, like that's the life you got to live, and like. You know, take it from me. I'm, you know, been through all sorts of, you know, ups and downs. Like, but it's that's absolutely the only reason to, you know, be alive and continue to be alive. Because fact is, you have to for the moment. So make it good. Yeah, it's scary. Stuff's not getting any less scary. Uh, I don't, you know. I mean, as soon as we're <laughs> as soon as we're out of this whole pandemic. And we're still gonna have you know like the carbon crisis uh to contend with and like you know major breaks that we have to put on globally like it's gonna be a touch and go so make your life worthwhile i guess you yeah know? definitely man resources as well are getting scarcer and scarcer uh, it's uh we were having a good ch chat about it last night man um well before it gets too fucking scary i do want to fucking come out and see you and I think like that, I've never been to Portland, and that's. I've always weird. wanted to go to Portland. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, cool, man. Yeah, man. Like as soon as as soon as stuff's back on, I mean, seriously, hit me up. I'm planning on living here. You know, or at yeah. least I hope I don't have to move during a pandemic. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, well, I've definitely got to do a trip out to Utah, so I could definitely swing swing by. Like I'm planning to do a, a bit of a road trip as well if I do. So. Hell yeah, dude. Either one, man. Cool. Any? Uh, do you want to give any thank yous to anyone? Any like shout outs or anything? Man, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, definitely a big shout out to to Sam, uh, Jay, and Steph uh, over the True School, man. Uh, you know, can, been holding it down uh, forever. Uh, Thomas Keenley, you know, thanks for always looking the same somehow. <laughs> like that man has looked the exact same <laughs> through, through his entire life, uh, and all you know, just throw, throws it down. Uh, thanks to Ingo Foray for being just one of the weird, crazy innovators uh, that you are in the sport, and for still killing it. Um, yeah, man. I mean, Rob Nye. You know, thanks for thanks for throwing backside rodeos uh, back, you know, like in the '90s. <laughs> um, that was, you know, yeah. Let's see. Uh, gosh, man, I don't know, man. This, I mean, the list just goes on and on. I want to thank Britt. I want to thank. Uh, I want to thank Dan, uh, Dan Coleman, man. Uh, definitely uh, Victor Merstig. You know, it's like sick part in Disturbed, man. Uh, Eddie Burgess, dude wherever you are thanks for doing that weird thing where you would just stay on two wheels and turn all the way around in a corkscrew <laughs> like weird flatland street board tricks i might post I some mean, eddie burgess footage from disturbed in here yeah. dude yeah <laughs> please do um yeah he's uh i don't know man there were a bunch of like interesting dudes like uh you know in that southern california scene that just like i don't know they're major influencers so that's uh that's always going to kind of stick with me, you know? Cool. Uh, yeah, no, man. Man. Thank you for being on. There's just one thing that I always do. I do a couple of quick, quick, quick fire rounds. Actually, I didn't do it in the last episode, but it just didn't really fit. So a, a few quick questions just uh, related to street right. boarding. So um, who's, your, who's your favorite ever street boarder? Gosh. Oh, man. I don't know. That's I'm probably going to give that one spit man um he had the he has the darkest attitude and is so amazingly goth and also like is one of the most hopeful people i've ever met in my life and like his real tricks dude i don't know like yeah, yeah. he's just he does stuff that like scares the bejesus out of me yeah. um so yeah respect to spit man for sure yeah, definitely man um what's your favorite ever street ball video or skateboard <sighs> Man, I mean, uh, God, to pick a favorite, I don't know, man. I think that the one that I, I think I, the one that I watched the very most in my life is Disturbed, uh, and like, uh, I think that that's kind of I got to go with Disturbed just because it's the most iconic. Yeah, but man, I mean, all the frontal videos, uh, like freaking amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah, 
I don't know. Yeah, we'll just go with Disturb. Keep cool, it short. Cool, cool. Anyway. And what's the, what's the hardest trick you've ever done? Ooh. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean... I think that I think that learning uh, like proper feebles uh, on like hubba ledges uh, is kind of one of the scarier like weird weird things. But I got I did get to the point where I had those on lock uh, switch and regular front side back side. Um, I don't know though. Like I never I didn't I wasn't uh, I wasn't much for like the slidey tricks. I I was kind of more huck yourself off of something huge uh, type of guy. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, man, I don't know. Like there's, uh, there's definitely several, uh, sets of stairs that I would never want to visit again that, you know, had the, had the, uh, joy of jumping all the way down right away from, um, but yeah. I don't know, man, how do you, every trick seems hard to me now that I don't ride. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, um, final one. Um, if you were stuck on a desert Island with a street border, who would it be? Wow, you know, I think I think I'm gonna have to give this one to Sam. He's just I th I think that I relate to his attitude the most. I know that we could give each other enough space and also you know keep each other somewhat sane. He's 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 handy in you know like a a, Mag a MacGyver esque variety of situations, which not a lot of people know about Sam because he keeps it pretty low key. So. Yeah, I think I think we're going, Sam. Let's. Yeah, uh, on, I'm there. I'm there. Let's do it. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. So, thank you so much, Jack. I'm, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up, man. Like we've got to hopefully in the next couple of years we'll end up hanging out. Um, thank you for being on the show, Sam. Have you got any last words? No, no, that was great, Jack. Um, thanks. It's great talking to you, man. Um, try not to leave it so many years this time. Let's definitely do that. I hope you guys can use any of that footage. Um, yeah, man, love what you're doing. Keep it, keep it rolling, man. Cool. For sure. Thanks. Let's uh, let's catch up after the fact too. You know. Yep, yeah, definitely, definitely. And thank you, everyone out there. That was episode 11 with Jack Johnson. Um, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe below somewhere around here. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please pop them below. Till next time. That was Dragoncast. Thank you. <laughs> Fleet-bodied dreams, future and past Here in the present, it's Dragon Cast yeah.